Towards the end of Bully, Gary Smith unleashes his plans to take over Borth Academy, and he does this by causing absolute hell to everybody there, and yet somehow succeeds. We learn at the end of the game, before beating him, he's made head boy by Dr. Crabblesnitch and somehow has all the clicks wrapped around his little finger. But even if Jimmy fails to beat Gary, he is ultimately doomed to fail and I hope to explain why in today's episode of Bully Theories. Disclaimer though, this video is purely for fun and should not be taken too seriously, and yes, I certainly did overthink everything in this entire video. Let's get on to the first possible outcome, which is Dr. Crabblesnitch being freed from his office. Now for this, I'm going to have to theorise what happened before and during Complete Mayhem to actually build up some context for this. As we know, sometime before Final Showdown, Dr. Crabblesnitch gets tied up in his office, but here's a possible plot hole. How did Gary even time up without him noticing? Well, the bigger question is, how did this even happen to begin with? Now somebody could say that Gary got the townies to do his dirty work, which could be possible given the townies did commit arson, which shows they don't exactly have high morals. Hey, what's up, Mr. Burton? What's up? What's up? My gym is up in flames, look! Damn, how'd that happen? As if you don't know, you're a degenerate! But by the time Jimmy gets expelled to the ending of the game, all the townies are in Blue Skies Industrial Park and they all harbour hatred for Gary. And plus, Gary himself admits he tied Cravel Snitch up before the final showdown fight. Everyone and everyone hates you. Genius. The head likes me. I tied him up. So, unless Gary flat out knocked Cravel Snitch out and tied him up from there, it's impossible for Cravel Snitch not to notice his attacker. Personally, I believe Gary did knock out Cravel Snitch before the events of Complete Mayhem, as Gary is in the school and has access to the intercom, which hints he is in the office the entire time. and Crabblesnitch regains consciousness sometime before Gary and Jimmy begin their fight. So let's go over a slightly different timeline where Jimmy gets expelled, but he's sent home rather than being allowed to stay in his dorm, the events of Complete Mayhem would still happen. Gary would most likely stay in the office with Crabblesnitch, and eventually, Crabblesnitch would be freed, most likely by a prefect, other members of staff, or even the police. As we know, prefects and Gary are inside the school during the events of Complete Mayhem, and the police are waiting outside. I think it'd only be a short amount of time before one of the prefects finds Gary inside the office and notices Crabblesnitch tied up, or possibly Crabblesnitch even regains consciousness and sees or hears Gary taunting over the intercom. It would be difficult for Gary to worm his way out of this one, as Crabblesnitch or the prefects would know Gary tied him up. And as we know, the prefects have some kind of supernatural power which lets all of them know where a possible criminal is, so Gary would most likely be swarmed and taken down by all four of them before Crabblesnitch gets untied and expels Gary. The Bullworth police would enter, break up the riots, and everything goes back to the way it was at the beginning of the year, where everybody hates each other, but they won't beat each other up. As for Gary, much like the end we get in the final game, he loses control of Bullworth and is kicked out for everything he's done. However, it's likely that Crabblesnitch wouldn't know anything about Gary getting people expelled or putting other people into therapy alongside all the other stuff he got the townie to do, like ransack the library and all that. So Gary would have still beaten Jimmy and to an extent the greasers, but he would have lost his goal to take over the school. But what if Gary somehow manages to avoid being detected and tying Crabble Snitch up? Gary is not a stupid character, for all of his flaws he seems to have plans, and I think Gary's plan to worm his way out of this would be to claim the dropouts to tie Crabble Snitch up, as I do harbour a hatred for the school and love anarchy, and since Crabble Snitch has trust in Gary, he would most likely believe him over the townies. It also plays well into Gary's character, as once again he manages to manipulate Crabble Snitch and also manages to make life even worse for the townies. Well, the second more possible outcome would be Gary's intentions become transparent to everybody. Now, this is one of the more likely outcomes in my opinion, as one of Gary's major downfalls is keeping his true intentions hidden. As we learn throughout the game, we know that aside from Jimmy, Gary's also used his tactics on the townies and the greasers, who grew wise to him towards the end of the game. Gary said we make them all pay. Wait a second, Gary? That backstabbing two-faced sociopath put you up to this? Ah, oh, I bet he said the two of you would take over the school or some crap. Hey, how'd you know? Because he told me the same garbage. Didn't do me any good either. Come on, you're gonna help me make- Now we know exactly how Gary's plans work. He befriends somebody, or a clique, gains their trust, gets them to do some favours for him, and then backstabs them when they've done what he wanted them to do, and then tries to set them up to get rid of them. Like with Jimmy Hopkins, he tried to get him beaten up by Russell in front of everybody, and he put Johnny Vincent in a mental asylum by getting the dropouts to spread rumours about Lola. Which completely damaged the greasers by leaving them without a leader. What's going on? Johnny's disappeared, gone crazy, abducted by aliens! I bet it was you, Hopkins! Yeah. Someone said they saw a couple of asylum orderlies driving up to his house, but you know how people love to talk. Johnny wasn't crazy! Even though in the story we openly see this with Jimmy and the townies, he's performing the same song and dance routine with Johnny Vincent, by trying to help him find Algernon in that. 
Even though in the story we openly see this with Jimmy and the townies, he's also performed the same song dance routine on Ernest Jones as well by saying that he would take over the school with him, playing into the desperation Ernest has to become a leader. We can also assume that Gary may have done something similar with Darby Harrington and Ted Thompson behind the scenes. So in order for this outcome to actually happen, we need to take a look at a slightly the alternate timeline again, one where Jimmy gets expelled and sent home rather than staying at the academy. Hey, jokes on the town hall? But that kid likes to torture people! Gary Smith is the next head of this school. He's responsible, courteous, and not afraid of being an unpopular leader. You are blind, old man! Blind! And you are leaving to attend to your education elsewhere! Now get out! Complete mayhem would still take place, although it's likely that the townies and the bullies would also be participating, as Jimmy isn't there to convince them that Gary tricked them. And Russell doesn't get held up at Wonder Meats, so the riot would be even worse. With the school on complete lockdown, it would be a while before the riots actually get broken up, presumably by the Bullworth Police Department, who we know have broken up riots before, as they dealt with the preppy greaser riot that happened in the winter, or the riots would slowly die down on their own due to mass injuries. After the riots get broken up, and after a few days, everything slowly turns back to normal, with just extreme tensions running high amongst the cliques. It'd be like it was during Chapter 1, but worse. At this point, I think Gary would have a really hard time keeping all the cliques under his control, as Gary's method of causing chaos is usually to spread rumours and watch drama unfold from the sides. But, if he's the king of the school, it would be rather difficult for Gary to talk to a clique about what somebody else did to their friends, as somebody would most likely see them. After all, all it takes is somebody of a camera to take pictures of Gary meeting with a clique. After all, Johnny Vincent hired Jimmy to do just that with Gordon Lola. And then Gary's plans would soon come to an end. So let's say somebody does get a picture of Gary meeting up with Ted Thompson or something like that to spread rumours about Ernest Jones, Darby Harrington or whatever and say this all gets out put in the open. With Gary's trouble making finally revealed, it'd be likely that most of the students, if not all of them, would actually be out for revenge for everything Gary did. Possibly to the extent that even Darby Harrington and Johnny Vincent would put their differences aside to deal with Gary. As we know, many clique leaders and body are very protective of their groups, like how Darby Harrington never met Jimmy before, but because he humiliated the preps by beating their best, Biff Taylor, in a boxing match, Darby tried to teach Jimmy a lesson. That, and Gary himself, isn't exactly popular, with many people around Bullworth calling Gary a sociopath, and at no point do we see Gary with any actual friends, so he's not a very popular person to begin with. The only friends we see Gary hanging out with are, well, just Jimmy and Pete, but he sort of backstabs them at the end of chapter one. And what are you gonna do? I've got planning to do. Head boy or not, Gary's life at Bullworth after being found out would be hell, much like Jimmy's was after he spaced the Bullworthless tag, Wherever he goes, he's attacked by nearly everybody he's seen by. It would be likely that Gary Smith would see the same fate. Unlike Jimmy, who can actually handle himself in a fight, Gary is not a fighter. Even though Gary could hide beyond the head boy status and try to get people expelled, I don't think he'd be able to handle that for too long. The thing is, if I win, you're just another punk! You win, and you'll be sent away even quicker for beating up the head boy! Why'd you do it? What good is it taking over the school when nearly everybody's out to get you? Gary would have no control at all, he lost, just not to Jimmy. Lastly, another thing which could cause Gary to lose is just his plans in general. Throughout the entirety of chapter 1, Gary says he has plans to take over the school, and yes he does succeed by chapter 5, but at no point does he ever mention his plans to keep control of the school, or what his ultimate goal is. However, I guess you could say his goal is to cause as much chaos as possible, which if it is, he did succeed. But even if his goal was to cause as much chaos as possible, he seemingly has no plans to keep himself in control. We don't know if Gary had plans or not, so if he didn't, he's completely unprepared for whatever awaits him in the future. I think there's absolutely no way that Gary would be able to successfully take over the school for a long period of time. All of his plans have severe holes in them which will cause his downfall. So that's it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching. If you like this video be sure to leave a like, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff then please subscribe, you know, for more bully stuff, and uh, well, when, and well, when, and well, when, for fuck's sake. And when Red Dead Redemption 2 gets here, I'll be doing similar things about that. And if you want to support the channel, Patreon, uh, don't use ad blocker, whatever really. Or don't, it's up to you. And hopefully, if everything all goes well, next week's video should be my character critique on John Marston. So yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.